thank you. My daughter inspired an idea. It was the idea of traveling around New Zealand to meet and photograph children with a range of chromosomal and genetic conditions and to present them and their unique abilities in the form of a photographic art book. The images and stories contained in the book would be a celebration of humanity. It would help people to see the beauty and value in these amazing children and give hope to families. It all started with Evie Amore Callender, a little girl, our daughter, born with a rare chromosomal condition, partial trisomy 9 and partial monosomy 6. When she was born, we were told that this condition meant that she wouldn't walk, wouldn't talk, wouldn't eat solid food. We were told that she had skeletal anomalies, dysmorphic features, developmental delays, failure to thrive, and that this condition was incompatible with life. What we saw, however, was value, beauty, potential, our precious daughter. In the beginning, our journey with Evie was hard, especially with all the medical stuff and big scary words that were thrown at us, and the, the regular emergency trips to hospital where her life hung in the balance. Yet looking after Evie and loving her was the most easy thing to do, and my role as her mum was to bring out the best in her. She drew out love in us in ways I never knew was imaginable. We learned to readjust our expectations and our hopes and dreams as a family. Thoughts about the future were removed, and in their place, an appreciation of each moment. Evie constantly amazed us with her strength and determination to survive, and we found that we became stronger too, and what we could cope with expanded. Over time, we started to realize that Evie was responding to particular environments, which made us think that she was experiencing them a little differently to other people. For example, there's a stretch of road between Timaru and Christchurch with a large number of electrical pylons, and we traveled this road quite a lot. And we discovered that she was crying every time we went under these pylons. We're like, oh, she's doing it again. There's something going on here. And then we noticed this extended into supermarkets and other places there were electric sliding doors. It was as if she had an electromagnetic sensitivity that was unique to her. We started saying she had superpowers as a lighthearted way to describe this phenomenon. We soon realized that her entire character and the things she was teaching us and those around her was very profound. Her strength and her bravery. How she expressed her happiness with her entire body. How she invoked a depth of love in people they hadn't experienced before. Her fragility and her pure joy disarmed people and drew them in. Even down to how she got around, scooting on her back on the floor instead of walking. These things made her unique, distinctly Evie, and we referred to them as her superpowers. By now, they were no longer light-hearted words, but incredibly real. Superpowers became a positive way for us to describe our daughter with the constant medical deficit language used. What's wrong with her? The superpower mentality helped us to balance that deficit, and it helped to bring out Evie's best and helped others to see it too. It made her accessible to people and helped them to engage with her and she became a beautiful part of our community. We are grateful to have enjoyed two and a half years with our beautiful daughter. In her short yet remarkable life, Evie inspired a dream, her legacy, the Superpower Baby Project. The dream was to meet and photograph other children with genetic and chromosomal conditions and to discover their unique superpowers and to present them in a beautiful photographic art book. So that's what I did. I travelled from the north to the south of New Zealand, meeting these amazing families, walking into their living rooms as a stranger, sitting with them, listening to their story, building up trust and then photographing their amazing child. And I loved being able to connect with these kids. 
and celebrate them and discover what they love to do. And this is what Evie taught me. It wasn't about having expectations of the shoot or the image or the children themselves. It was about fun and getting to know them and what they could do. The images just emerged from the naturalness of the experience. And the parents loved to gush about their children. And they told me that it was very healing because they're so used to explaining medical stuff and all the things they're working on and the hard medical reality of the children's conditions. But they were able to tell me all the things they loved about their child. It was a magnificent honour to meet ordinary families being made extraordinary through the journeys their children are taking them on. some of the words that come to your mind after seeing those images? The words that I think of and the things that I see are happiness, life, vibrancy, potential, beauty. The words we currently use and have been given to describe disability are retarded, abnormal, developmentally delayed, incompatible with life, and dis- Abled. In our current culture, unfortunately, the first words and thoughts that come to mind when we see or meet a person with disability is what's wrong or they can't do. These words take potential and even ability away. What we associate with the word disability shows up the deficits in our culture that does not accept, encourage or celebrate all humanity. We're quick to place value judgments on a person before they're even born, before they have a chance to reveal their unique character, before we can realise how much they will deepen our own experience of life. As a new parent of a child with superpowers, I grieved the loss of experiences I expected as a parent, without realising that these would be replaced by equally beautiful and happy ones. We knew that Evie might not ever kick a ball, go to school, read a book or even talk. 
but we didn't know the extreme joy we would find in discovering how much she loved being on a beanbag, or how rolling on the floor together would make us all laugh, or how she would teach us her own language. She could communicate complex emotions just by using the tone of her voice and a single sound, ooh. We were astounded to discover on our travels that consistent themes were emerging and how the parents were describing the characteristics of their children and their abilities and the things they were teaching them. The parents used words like unconditional love, perseverance, patience, kindness, empathy, compassion, incredible joy. These are some of humanity's highest ideals, and these children are the teachers of these values. In our culture's relentless obsession with perfection and our desire to follow society's pre-prescribed measures of success, we are reducing our own capacity to embrace these things. The heart of the Superpower Baby Project is for people to see the value, potential, abilities and beauty in all children. This project celebrates the things that make a person truly exceptional by changing the focus, the language, and adopting an attitude that celebrates all humanity. Thank you so much.